So if you've ever turned on a smart light or configured a sensor, chances are you've worked with MQTT. But what actually is MQTT? Hi, my name is Christopher Sandoval. I'm a product marketing and developer relations expert, and I'm here to make your product and your marketing just a little better. By the end of today's video, you should have a firm understanding of what MQTT is and where it's often used. So let's dive in to Quick Tech. So first off, what does MQTT even mean? MQTT is an acronym that stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. And what that actually means is that it's a really lightweight protocol designed for devices that can't handle heavy networking. So consider things like microcontrollers, sensors, remote systems that have poor connectivity. That's where you typically see MQTT. Now, unlike HTTP, which is typically a direct request and a direct response, MQTT operates on what's called a publisher subscriber model. In essence, there's really three entities here. There's a publisher that is generating the stream of events, the information. Then there's a subscriber who is getting all of that information. But in the middle, there's an entity called an MQTT broker. And the broker basically collects a topic from the publisher that allows the subscriber to subscribe. A good way to think about this is that typical HTTP APIs are kind of like a phone call. You dial a number, the other person on the end picks up, and then you have a conversation. For MQTT, it's more like you're getting a magazine subscription. You've demonstrated interest in this topic, and then over time you get publications that are related to that topic. So MQTT brokers might say, hey, I have all this information that's coming from photovoltaic sensors, and its topic is called PV sensor. So anyone who is interested in that information can then go to the broker and say, hey, I want to be updated. And then they'll get updates as they roll into the broker. Now, why is MQTT so popular in certain industries? So MQTT was designed to operate in really constrained environments. And because of the nature of IoT devices, sensors, things like that, you don't often have a ton of RAM or a ton of networking capability. So you need to send this stream of information or you need to receive a very specific stream of information that's limited by a topic. MQTT messages are also super tiny and the connections that are created for MQTT systems are often kept alive over the long term. So you can basically subscribe once and expect to get really small payloads that aren't going to break your system. Now, because it operates in such varied conditions, there's also a quality of service setting. You can say at most once, which means that you fire and forget. You can say at least once, which means that the message is sent and the system guarantees that it's going to be delivered. And then there's exactly once. And that's sort of like the Pony Express. It's going to make it no matter what. And MQTT shows up kind of everywhere. You'll see them a lot in smart home devices, LED controls, temperature sensors, sometimes even car components. You'll basically see it any time where the operating environment isn't necessarily guaranteed. And that operating environment can be both on the network side or the device side. So that's MQTT. Smart, fast, reliable, and made for constrained network conditions. So the next time you see live data appearing instantly, you'll know where it came from. This has been Christopher Sandoval with your Quick Tech. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.